Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! В эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. So today I want to talk to you about Леонид Макарович Кравчук, the very first president of independent Ukraine. Some of you may heard that sad news that Леонид Кравчук passed away on May 10 of 2022 at the age of 88 years old. He was the president of newly independent Ukraine from 1991 till July of 1994. And that's when I used to live back in Kyiv, Ukraine, so all those events are still in my memory. The death of Leonid Kravchuk is kind of a big deal because he was the last survivor of so-called three amigos, Yeltsin, Shushkevich, and Kravchuk, three communists, three leaders of Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine that signed the death sentence to the Soviet Union back in Belovyevskaya Pusha in 1991. For those of you who don't like my long and boring stories, there is a short synopsis of Leonid Kravchuk's life. He was born in Western Ukraine in 1934. Back then, that part of Ukraine was under Poland. In 1939, Soviet Union took over of that territory after, together with Nazi Germany, they attacked Poland. Then in 1941, in the summer, that territory became part of Nazi Germany, when Nazi Germany attacked Soviet Union. Then Soviet Union came back in 1944, and that's where Leonid Kravchuk grew up. Leonid Kravchuk became quite a successful communist apparatchik in Soviet Ukraine. And then in 1991, he dropped his communist membership like a hot potato in order to become a president of newly independent Ukraine. And he ended his life in Germany, where he passed away on May 10, 2022. And now let's go a little bit into detail of his life. As I mentioned, he was born in 1934. So this is kind of lucky timing because he was too young to get drafted during the World War II. So he was kind of like a second generation of Soviet leaders. So it's people after like uh, Khrushchev and Brezhnev who participated in the war. The next wave was Yeltsin, Shushkevich, Kravchuk. All those people were born around 1931, 1934. So they survived the war because they didn't have to go to fight. And then later they became leaders of Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. I also want to point out that name Leonid is kind of a little bit strange. My guess it was popular back in the 30s because it's not really a Ukrainian name. But then, of course, we had Leonid Brezhnev. Now we have Leonid Kravchuk. And Leonid is kind of similar to Leo, Lev. So that has origins going back to Greek or Roman times. So Leo means Lev. And uh, usually if somebody called Leonid, uh, the short form is Lyonia. So when you're a little kid, no one will be calling you Leonid, they'll be calling you Lyonia. What I remember about Leonid Kravchuk is that he spoke a very good Ukrainian, which is kind of unusual for the Soviet era apparatchiks, because most people were speaking Russian in Kyiv and the eastern part. And for example, our second uh, president of Ukraine, Leonid Kuchma, could barely Uh, speak Ukrainian. It was uh, quite embarrassing. When I was getting ready for this video, I found an interview on YouTube. So there's a guy who used to work with Leonid Kravchuk. He was his colleague in the Communist Party of Ukraine. And he really wasn't happy about Kravchuk. He called him Pirivortish, which is like a turncoat, because he was like one of the best communists in party of Ukraine. And then pretty much overnight, he became uh, anti-communist. So Leonid Kravchuk uh, finished Kyiv University and he got a degree in economy, but then somehow he drifted into the uh, being a communist party apparatchik. Uh, he became a member of Communist Party of Ukraine in 1958. So you need to remember, in the Soviet Union, every republic had its own communist party. And that was the only party, of course, in that republic. We had a monopoly for that. So Russia had a communist party of Russia. Ukraine had a communist party of Ukraine. In 1981, so when uh, Comrade Sergei was 10 years old, uh, Leonid Kravchuk became a member of the Central Committee, Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine. 
and a little bit later in 1990 he became a member of Politburo and he climbed as high as to be a second uh, secretary of the Politburo of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine. So there was a first secretary who guy who ran the show just like you know Gorbachev used to be secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. So Leonid Kravchuk was second secretary in Ukraine. Apparently Comrade Kravchuk was a big fan of Comrade Lenin and he read everything, all the works that Lenin wrote and he read it twice making notes. And according to the people he worked with, uh, Kravchuk was one of those guys, you know, like there's people who can quote the Bible and tell you, you know, it's Matthew 3.15 or some other references. Kravchuk was that good with Lenin work. So the Lenin's Bible, he could tell, like they, they're writing some speech and they're trying to come up with some reference to communism or role of Ukraine. And he's like, yeah, uh, in such and such as work of Lenin, he mentioned this on page such and such, and they will flip it. Sure enough, there's a quote of by Lenin. So Kravchuk was really good in that. He knew very much by heart all the works of uh, Lenin. And I find it so ironic because later on Leonid Kravchuk was the guy who signed the law about outlawing the Communist Party of Ukraine. So being a top communist apparatchik in Ukraine, he ended up signing the law that outlaw his own party. And that's why his former colleague called him Perivortish, the turncoat. But what is even more ironic is that Leonid Kravchuk became the president of, of independent Ukraine totally by accident. You know, sometimes people work hard for years towards some specific goal. Here, it literally happened by accident. As I mentioned, Leonid Kravchuk was the second secretary of the Central Committee. Meanwhile, Vladimir Ivashka was the first secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine. And when we finally had our first election in independent Ukraine. It was Vladimir Vashka who was elected as a chairman of like a Ukrainian Congress and Kravchuk was just another, you know, like senator. So he was literally nothing. The first real election in Ukraine happened in March of 1990. And when I say real, that means that we have more than one candidate. So people could actually choose between candidates. It's still communists took a solid majority uh, out of like 411 uh, spots. I believe they took 200, like almost 300 and opposition got like 111. So back in 1990s, communist party still was, had a strong hold on power even when they allowed competition. So Vladimir Vashka, the first secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine, became a chairman of Ukrainian parliament. And he, next logical step would be for him to become a president of Ukraine, except he made a huge, huge mistake. He was invited by Gorbachev to join him in Moscow. And he literally abandoned Ukraine and left for Moscow. That was an enormous blow to image of the Communist Party of Ukraine because the guy that was pretty much the chairman of parliament, the main guy in the government, just quit Ukraine and left for Moscow. And still Ukrainian communists re-elected a new chairman, Leonid Kravchuk, the second secretary of Communist Party of Ukraine. During those events, I was a student in college in Kyiv, and I actually remember that one day we had our classes canceled and uh, we were offered, if you want, you can join demonstration. So there was a huge demonstration in Kyiv when uh, students mostly were protesting the communists holding the power. And I remember marching from uh, Kyiv Polytechnic Institute all the way to downtown of Kyiv and uh, one of the slogans that we were uh, chanting was Kravchuchok, Kravchuchok, Ptashechka, Politai do Moskvy, Yakivashechka. So that's Kravchuk, you need to fly like a birdie to Moscow just like Ivashko did. So people were upset that we have one top communist betrayed Ukraine 
And what we do, we elected another communist to lead the country. And before I forget, a quick note about Vladimir Vashka. So he moved to Moscow. He became very much second secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, second guy next to Gorbachev. But as you know, 1991 wasn't the great year uh, for Mikhail Gorbachev. He had a coup in August of 1991. Then the Soviet Union was dissolved and Gorbachev just pretty much resigned, lost uh, his uh, role as the president of Soviet Union because Soviet Union was dissolved. And uh, Vladimir Ivashka kind of disappeared into nothingness. He retired in 1992 and he passed away in 1994 in Moscow and he was buried uh, in Kharkiv, Ukraine. So the guy who had the chance to be the first president of Ukraine made the wrong choice and uh, that's why we have a uh, first president of Ukraine, Leonid Kravchuk. So he died quite young. He was only 62 years old back in 1994. And I'm not sure it was it natural causes or anything else happened because I just discovered that uh, Vladimir Ivashka was uh, working on hiding Communist Party of Soviet Union money. He was helping to move valuables out of the Russia to the West because Boris Yeltsin was planning to tax Communist Party for its income and assets. So Ivashka was part of this asset moving from Russia to the West and then he died. Meanwhile, Leonid Kravchuk was a, quite a good politician and being a politician is being like a server. You look at the incoming wave and you need to decide are you going to fight it or are you going to ride it? So he saw this new kind of powerful nationalist wave uh, rising in Ukraine and he decided to ride it. Uh, he quit the Communist Party of Ukraine and then on August 30th, 1991, he signed the law banning the Communist Party of Ukraine. So here we go from being a second in command of the Communist Party to signing the law banning the party. Good job, well done, Comrade Kravchuk. Then during the first presidential election of newly independent Ukraine, Kravchuk ran as Bespartini, so he had no party affiliation and he managed to beat his biggest uh, opponent, Chernovol, Vladimir Chernovol, who was a Ukrainian dissident and the guy who had a huge support in the western part of Ukraine, but zero support in the eastern part of Ukraine. So Ukraine still, with the ban on the Communist Party, made a choice and uh, chose a former communist over a Ukrainian national dissident. Many people think that Kravchuk was great president for Ukraine. I personally don't think so, but I don't know if we elected Chernobyl, they'll be any better. Definitely Ukraine at that time wasn't ready for something like that extreme like real national leader, not former communist, but economy tanked under Kravchuk. I mean, economy tanked in every former Soviet Republic, uh, but Kravchuk was playing this game, you know, he was trying to be nice with Russia and to take advantage of uh, Russian's desire to keep Ukraine in its sphere of interest. So like President Yeltsin uh, kind of wanted Crimea back, but he didn't demand it. And uh, Kravchuk kind of, okay, it's don't ask, don't tell policy. So that's how Ukraine initially kept the Crimea. And some people think that if Yeltsin really would push hard towards, I want Crimea back, uh, Kravchuk would let it go, but who knows? And I have this funny looking caricature right here, shows the Kravchuk running away with a piece of cheese in the shape of Crimea and old grandma that looked like Yeltsin are crying. I remember we had a joke about Leonid Kravchuk that because he's such a smooth operator, you know, dodges the bullets. Uh, someone asked him like, Comrade Kravchuk, do you want an umbrella? He's like, no, I don't need an umbrella. I can just dodge between the uh, raindrops. And that was pretty much the image of Leonid Kravchuk that he could figure out how to just dodge the problem instead of solving the problem. When I think about those early 90s in Kravchuk, I always think about Kravchuchka. So there's a little cart with two wheels and a handle that helps you to move around heavy luggage. That device became very popular in Ukraine because people started doing their 
small businesses, hole and stuff. So they started making those. My mom has one of those. And that uh, cart got the nickname Kravchuchka. So that's after our president Kravchuk. They even have this silly looking monument dedicated to Kravchuchka, that uh, cart for the heavy luggage. It's for people who call Chilnakid also. Uh, shuttles the people were traveling between like Belarus and Ukraine or Russia and Ukraine or even going to Turkey and bringing goods to resell. Kravchuk just like Yeltsin and Russia allowed some people to become a mega rich, become oligarchs by managing to privatize for next to nothing the most valuable factories, steel mills and stuff like that. So while the majority of people were suffering and struggling, we had, just like in Russia, quite a few mega rich oligarchs. And Kravchuk let it happen, probably was getting paid for that. As I keep on repeating, this is what happens when you let a former communist build capitalist society. They don't know how to build. They know only how to steal or how to get kickbacks for letting other people to steal. And in my personal opinion, the worst thing that Kravchuk let happen was this huge, horrible inflation. In, I believe in 1992, Ukraine got its own currency. There was a temporary currency called coupons, coupone. And I remember the initial rate of exchange was on the black market, of course, was 60 coupons for $1. When we finally got grivnas, which is current, currency and that Grivna replaced coupons, the rate of exchange was 187,000 coupons for $1. So from 60 coupons to 187,000 coupons and in about five years, that's how huge was inflation, it was thousands or tens of thousand percent per year. Your money were like literally like holding snow in your hands, was melting away. So everyone was trying to keep their uh, money in foreign currencies. And a lot of people who didn't know uh, what to do in such conditions, they lost so much because, you know, you will sell your car and if you keep money in coupons in six months, that money be uh, worth really nothing or half of it. So uh, he... Uh, helped a lot of people to become so poor because he let that horrible inflation to occur. And of course, privatization in Ukraine was a total failure, just like in Russia. As I said, some people got everything, became mega rich, became oligarchs, and most people who every citizen of Ukraine got so-called privatization certificate. And I'm planning to make a separate video on that topic because I have a good story about how I uh, deal with those certificates with my family, but it didn't work out for most people. We didn't get uh, anything in return. So that was a, a big, big fiasco and disappointment. And another huge mistake that I believe Leonid Kravchuk did is he was, uh, instead of just running for NATO, like the Baltic states did, Latvia, Litva, and Estonia, uh, he decided that he needed uh, low prices for gas, natural gas and oil. So he was playing this game with Russia. It's almost like, you know, you want to have a free ice cream from the guy in unmarked van uh, and hoping that you won't have to pay the price. But right now, Ukraine is paying the price with blood for that cheap oil and natural gas that we were getting from Russia for years. And now Russia expects that Ukraine should be part uh, of Russia because Russia was providing cheap natural resources for so long. But Kravchuk did really well for himself. Uh, right before the end of his uh, presidency, he signed the executive order to organize a nonprofit fund to support Ukrainian culture. And the way the fund would be making money, it would be importing alcohol and cigarettes without paying any tax. It's usually we have so called accis, quite high tax if you import alcohol or cigarettes. So Kravchuk created this fund. Uh, to support culture. Then he lost the election and our new president, Leonid Kuchma, signed the executive order making Kravchuk as the president of this fund. And now that fund became, back in 1995, 96, the largest importer of alcohol and cigarettes to Ukraine. So of course, 
Kravchuk became rich. He, I remember him buying a nice place somewhere in Spain. He has a nice uh, house in Concha Zaspa. So he made a lot of money after retiring from being a president. And that move was creating a landing pad for himself because he knew he going to lose election. And the next president uh, putting him there, I remember being so, so mad. So here you are, the short story of Leonid Kravchuk, the first president of independent Ukraine, successful communist apparatchik, who knew when it was time to jump the ship, who became a turncoat, the guy who signed the law about outlawing his own communist party. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the story. As always, I enjoy reading your comments. Please don't forget to share this video. And I'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Потому что если дороги будут, то по ним неприятель проедет. И прямо в сердце России попадет. Я с ними согласен абсолютно.